So my objective for this session is to reflect on the course um, MOOCs that we've been running at the University of Leeds, as my position is um, having university responsibility for these courses, but I also have a, an educational role in, in the School of Education. So I'm really fortunate, and I'm able to look at this from the perspective of the pedagogy and also actually designing and delivering courses. And what I want to do is talk through the, the process that we went through to develop our first MOOC, the educational principles that we used to underpin that, and then reflect on the experience and give you my kind of um, ideas for what we might be doing in the future and perhaps it might, how it might um, affect the sector. So the first MOOC um, that the University of Leeds um, put on was called When Worlds Collide. It ran um, last October. And for those of you that don't know the University of Leeds, it's a Russell Group University with a very strong focus on international research. And we took the very active strategic decision that our MOOCs would be based on the kind of research-led teaching that we do at the university and that we would focus um, our online courses in that same vein. So we immediately set ourselves the pedagogic challenge of trying to ensure that students had the same kind of educational experience that they would get at the university. So we were very clear up front that we knew um, from running this course it was going to be different um, to, an, to a, a blended course that we run at the university, but we were trying to find ways to use innovative pedagogy to do this. Um, and we ran our course within the FutureLearn platform, uh, which in October was in beta phase um, and has quite limited functionality, I think it's fair to say, um, with a very impressive roadmap for how innovative pedagogy can be used, but at the moment quite um, Im immature in its, in its availability of um, innovation. So it, this is a kind of a story of how do, you, how do you try to do an innovative, pedagogically appropriate course in a platform that's just started. I guess that's how I should have titled it. Um, so the course that we did was run by Professor John Lovett, who's a world expert on um, natural resource management. And it was intended to, um, to portfolio, to profile the kind of work that he's been doing in universities around the world and with school level children for many years. And we wanted to make sure that we captured the essence of his educational expertise. So we designed a course that was two weeks long um, that went through four similar stages each week. The students were provided with welcome materials, which encouraged them to understand their learning goals, their digital learning skills, and the support that they needed. And then it moved on to three activities. Firstly, they were introduced to some principles of the subject. They then put those principles into practice through some case studies. And finally, there was a research active debate involving some ac academics um, from around the world who put those principles into a real life context. And this map that you're seeing here is something that the participants were talked through right at the beginning of the course in the course map so they could understand the learning journey that they're about to undertake and understand the way the course had been designed. And you can see coming off this linear journey in the dotted points the ways that the students were able to interact and to um, dig deeper or delve further into additional resources as and when they required to do so. And there were a lot opportunities, opportunities along the way for students to check their understanding. And then a final test at the end of the two weeks. So the first part of the course was where we tried to help students to understand their learning needs and to understand their digital skills to enable them to actually um, learn effectively online. And this is, I guess, the part of my talk that I would take slight issue with some of the things that Martin said this morning about students have the technology, they're perfectly able to use them. My experience is somewhat different, having taught students for 10 years at the University of Leeds and done a load of blended learning projects. I feel that students still need a huge amount of support to make the best use of learning online. And I feel that one of the reasons that MOOCs are having such low completion rates is because students don't know how to learn online. They don't know how to communicate, they don't know how to interact with others, and they don't know how to sit and study through an online environment. So we provided a whole range of what you would call study skills resources to help students to become more familiar with the platform, but also to understand their particular learning goals and how to um, conduct themselves online and how to learn online. So for example here, we talk through the process of mind mapping. So for these individuals who may have never studied online before, we talk through what it might be like for them to take notes from an online course and how they might want to organize their thoughts. So this was a very clear um, part of the course at the beginning um, that we very strongly signposted students to undertake. We then moved into the, the academic part of the course. Um, 
where we used a whole different range of video um, lectures, if you like. Um, very few of them were kind of face to head to camera, um, and they were all maybe five to seven minutes maximum. A, num a number of them were significantly shorter. So we used um, examples here where we've got John Lovett here. I call him Dancing John in these videos because he's on a white background and he moves around a lot when he talks. Um, so we're trying to recreate John giving a lecture in a real scenario where the slides and the images appear behind him on a white background. It zooms in and out. He disappears when a video plays. But it's a much more real experience than just a, a headshot of somebody in an office. We also use quite a lot of animation in the course. And this is a particularly strong example. So John gets his participants to do a thought experiment. Now, it's very hard to do a thought experiment with thousands of people online all sitting independently. But this is an uh, experiment that John has done with students in classrooms, in schools, all around the world. And he knows it works very effectively. So the challenge for us was to recreate that online. And we used a lot of animation to enable students to get a picture of what it would be like to live on a cloud without the planet, and how would we all decide the kind of roles we would take. So we used animation to help people to think about the, the underlying principles. And then immediately after this animation, students had a discussion and reflected on their own interpretation of the question. And this was a, a very, very successful and popular discussion with a, a large amount of engagement. Other forms of um, delivery we use almost like a whiteboard. So we drew on the instructional stuff, a bit like the Khan Academy, um, building up the pictures as you go along, along with a narration, which were also very popular with students. And finally, in the debate section of the course, we had this live debate where it was a, a discussion, a bit like we're having today, between experts, and the students could then pitch in with questions online for the experts who then answered them um, asynchronously after the debate had taken place. So we used a whole range of different learning techniques that we know are effective with our students on campus and in a blending environment and trying to see how they would work in an online environment. And the course finished, as I say, in November. So we, we have um, some initial data analysis of how it worked out um, for the course that we ran. It was in a beta phase. So this course had just over 5,000 learners, which, you know, if people want headlines of 120,000, that's not the game that we're in. We're quite completely focused on the quality of the experience the students get. And we're not at all particularly, we're not bothered if there are 5,000 or 50,000 students on the course. We're much more bothered about the quality of the educational experience that they receive. And we feel that the students that um, engaged with this course had an exceptional learning experience. 90% of them rated the course as excellent. 97% of them said they would recommend the course to friends and colleagues. From an educational perspective, some of these data are really exciting. Uh, we've got individuals who are spending over 24 minutes on the platform each time they came, and they're engaging with a whole, uh, a large number of the um, materials that are available to them. We're particularly interested to see that they appreciated that study skills material that we provided at the beginning, and they found that the level of the course that we'd put out was appropriate to their needs. And most um, importantly, they found that the, engager, the educator was very engaging. And that's probably the predominant comment that we've had from this course, was that John tried to respond to every substantive point that was made by participants. That's not to mean he replied to every discussion post, but he summarized in one way or another every major point that was made by participants, which really gave participants a sense that they were actually part of an educational experience. So the last thing um, just on this course is about the engagement. So we've talked already about completion rates. Um, again, we're not particularly focused on completion rates. We're more focused on learners' engagement and their experience during the course. But I wanted to share with you some initial analysis of the kind of engagement that we are having, we've had with this course and to show you what kind of um, effect the resources have on students' learning. So what you can see in front of you now is um, the data, the number of unique views of the individual assets that I've talked through already. So the first side of this slide is those study support materials, those videos about how to use the platform, how to study online. And you can see that there was a lot of engagement with that content. 
The academic material, which starts as week one acti activity one, where John was doing his dancing thing and thought experiment, you can see video interspersed with discussion, video, discussion, ending with a quiz. And it's really exciting and interesting to see that the participants are engaging with the discussions and the videos and the quizzes equally. You can see a drop during the week um, as the engagement reduces. In the second week of the course, what we're seeing is a lower um, number of people, unique users using the course, but again, a consistency in the use of video, quiz, and discussion. And then at the end of the week, a slight drop again to the number of people taking the end of course test. So in terms of engagement, if we take this number of participants as being initially engaged, they started um, quite strongly by looking through and using the resources and contributing discussion. At the beginning of week two, we had around 50% of the participants still engaged, and we had 48% of the participants taking the final course test.